So I know I've said this before, but this Fat Stacks project is actually a really interesting one, and the primary reason for that is because I'm actually going off of someone else's design documents. Now, I know I've said before that I think I've got all of this figured out, but the more I look at uh, the more I look at Ender Scythe's interpreter, it seems that uh, I keep missing things, and you know, for a fairly good reason too if you actually look at uh, his interpreter it's not the greatest of code um, I'm not gonna give him too much crap because I'm no better really if I was left to my own devices I would probably write something like this as well uh, but it is difficult to actually navigate this program and find out what everything does and so that's part of the reason why it's been such a long and tedious process actually uh, creating a computer to interpret this is because I didn't quite have a clear idea as to what this computer was supposed to do. So um, in my moment of absence I actually went through and I rewrote his interpreter uh, using a little bit closer to object-oriented style. Now anybody who follows, follows me on Twitter knows I, I really dislike object-oriented code uh, but in this sense having each instruction kind of self-contained uh, and then just executed in, uh, in the Stackish classes was actually kind of beneficial for the sake of clearly identifying uh, instructions type identifier and their functionality. So each instruction now is a class that can uh, tell you immediately what characters it looks for and I should probably zoom this in so you can actually see a little better. Um, what characters it's actually looking for and what it does when it's actually executed. Uh, and so having done this, uh, yes it's a little bit more verbose, but uh, it very clearly identifies what each instruction does. So with the instructions then properly sorted out and the, their functions properly identified, I was actually able to create a little bit more of an accurate uh, state diagram. Now there's a difference between this one and the last one. Um, subtle, but there's there are a few. Uh, for one, the pushing string function actually is now an indefinite function. So with my last instruction, or, or my last interpretation of the instruction, you couldn't push more than 16 characters at a time. This one does it indefinitely um, through the use of... Well, it's basically similar to uh, the way uh, strings work in programming, so these hex values aren't arbitrary. I actually pick them because they're the hex representation of certain characters, so 0x23 is double quote. Um, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more just so you can more clearly see, um, but a uh, 0x23 is a double quote. Uh, 0x5c is a backslash, so uh, anytime you see 0x23, that's the beginning of a string. Um, and it'll just continue to push characters into the uh, execution unit until it reaches another 23. The only way that that can actually be um, bypassed is if there's a 5C preceding it. So accepts any string that starts with single or double quote, ends with double quote, but not ending with backslash double quote. So that's sort of the um, escape character, if you will. Um, there's uh, otherwise there's not too terribly much difference. The other difference, of course, is the decode state. Um, my last revision, the fetch decode state was kind of rolled into one. That I found is actually a dumb idea, uh, and the reason why is because it takes time to actually fetch the instruction and bring it into the decoder, and then it also takes time to actually decode it. By doing this in two separate states. Uh, we shorten the duration of the clock cycle so even though effectively it's the same amount of time um, the amount of time that is spent on the subsequent states is shorter uh, and that's actually key because like I said this, these things are going to be pipelined uh, which means we're probably going to be dealing with a lot shorter clock pulses so it is uh, each instruction is increased by one state as a result but because the clock cycle duration is shorter this shouldn't be an issue. In fact, it should actually be much faster. Uh, otherwise, I think I've got everything figured out. The only uh, bone, I guess, I have to pick with this is this uh, conditional indirect jump sequence. Um, 
So there's actually two branches that I can take depending on what the state of the stack is. And the way I've done it and the way I did it last time was the state machine would pick one of two paths depending on if there was only one element left in the stack. And if there was, it would go down this path. If there wasn't, it would go down this path. And if there was one element left, it would jump to that address using these two states. Uh, but if there wasn't, it would just leave it. Interestingly enough, and I can actually show you with the source code here. So conditional indirect jump, you can actually see. Um, so there's, of course, a few exceptions and such, but it pulls the address from the stack and then uh, pushes that onto the popped stack. Uh, so that's fairly standard. You pull it from the stack, you push it to the popped stack, fairly standard stuff. But then it checks to see if the stack is equal to zero. And if it is, uh, then the address is then put into this uh, instruction pointer. If it's not, however, it's put back onto the stack and the instruction pointer is incremented by one. The result of this is uh, what I've noted here. Uh, if the status is not met, or, or if the condition is not met, then that means that the value that's currently in the stack is pushed to the unpopped stack, but the stack is not affected. I don't know why he chose to do it like this, and I've actually tried to ask Ender Scythe about this, and he seems to have fallen off the face of the earth, so hopefully he's okay but I don't know why he chose to do it like this. I don't see any reason to do it like this. So for the time being, until I'm told that I shouldn't do it like this, I'm actually going to leave it the way I had it prior, where the stack and the popped stack are only affected if the condition is met. So that's the way I'm going to do things. Um, otherwise, there's a couple other notes. These ones I've actually changed my mind on. I, tr I thought maybe um, I could merge these no-op states with the decode state. It's better to leave them separate, uh, and that's just to um, ensure that the timing for various uh, signals is not affected, especially with the case of this clear. I don't want the clear signal to be sent out during the decode state um, where it's actually decoding whether or not it should be clearing or not. So it's actually better to just leave it uh, in its own state. Um, this might pose an issue... If it's not part of, or if I was not part of the control section, I don't know about that. Um, I still need to go over the architecture a little bit to actually figure out if that is in fact going to be an issue or not. I'm still designing that, or still kind of going through all the details. Otherwise, I think this is pretty much set. The only challenge that I have right now is I need to make sure that all of these um, branches can work together because if I was going to use a standard multi-cycle computer, this would obviously be no problem if I wanted to go down the add branch. I go first through the fetch state decode down to the first execute of the add instruction, then the next, then the next, then the next, then the next. And then I would go back up to fetch, then decode, and down to whatever was next. But remember that this is a hybrid multi-cycle pipelined architecture. So even though uh, execution to this point will be fairly normal, by the time we go back to the fetch, uh, there's still these, inst or maybe it's the other ones. I don't know. Uh, there's still a couple states that are being executed in the execute unit. So I need to make sure that by the time that fetch and decode are done and it moves on to the next instruction, uh, that it's not going to cause a conflict. I was actually hoping to write a script in Python to do this for me. Uh, the logic for this is actually a little bit more complicated than it. Uh, I think I could actually handle, so I'm probably going to have to do this manually. If I find a good solution, I'll probably post another video. But that's actually one of the things that I need to do before I move forward, is make sure that uh, these instructions can work properly together. And I think I've mentioned in the last video that I suspect um, some of these conditions might actually be a problem. Uh, let's see here. Either the indirect jump or the direct jump, one of the two. I don't think the direct jump will be the problem. I think it's the, the only one that's going to be a problem is going to be the conditional and possibly the conditional execute uh, because these require 
flags. The, the conditional execute might actually be fine because the flag is actually sampled halfway through the sequence, which means by the time we actually head back to the, um, the fetch state, these signals will actually be ready for the control unit. Uh, the issue is going to be this conditional indirect uh, jump because it needs that flag to be available the moment it exits the decode state, uh, which depending on what instruction precedes it might be a problem. So these are the issues that I can foresee. Um, obviously there may be some other ones that I can't foresee, but that's actually why I wanted to try and get a script to do this for me so that I could catch all cases um, very thoroughly. Yeah, we'll see where it goes from here, but uh, ultimately that's my next vlog there. Is Yeah, we do actually have some progress going on. It's just very, very slow. And a uh, little side note, of course, um, this whole process would definitely go a lot faster if I had some sort of world editing program or even just like MC Edit or hell that amulet program if it was, that was uh, released a little sooner that would definitely be helpful but I guess lesson learned I probably shouldn't update worlds until the mods and tools that I use have been updated as well so that's actually on me I'm gonna have to work with what I've got right now I'm using bling edit which isn't the greatest but it's the only tool I have, so bear with me. You know, projects are going to be a little bit slower because of that, but hopefully I can get another uh, vlog entry released here soon. So that's all I've been working on. That's all I got, and I will see you guys in the next video.